Retro Refresh Production. Ah, the Nintendo Switch. Such a wonderful piece of gaming technology. Such a new and novel idea. Such a revolutionary way to play your games. Except it ain't. Oh, don't get me wrong. The ability to take whatever game you're playing at home out into the world as you travel, that's a great idea. But Nintendo are the last people to have that idea. What about the Nomad? When you're done playing your game for the day and you gotta get out of the house, you can turn off the console, take out the game and just put it in your Nomad so you can play it on the go. You could also do this with the Turbo Express, a great little thing that unfortunately I don't own. But did you know that Sega did this before the Nomad? Why, they did it with the beloved Master System, the greatest gaming console ever created. Don't argue with me. So how did they manage to let you take your Master System collection out into the world? Why, with the Sega Game Gear, of course. Game Gear. Released in the UK in 1991, this was Sega's response to the Nintendo Game Boy. Unlike its competition, this thing had a backlight, so you could actually see what you're fucking playing. It essentially has the same tech inside it as that of a Master System console. So, with the aid of a converter, it was actually possible to play your Master System games on the go. They didn't quite look as clear as the actual Game Gear games themselves, but they still played great and you didn't see Nintendo even trying anything like this at the time. Thanks to a fair pricing at the time of this thing's release, it was able to beat the Atari Lynx and NEC's Turbo Express with ease. There were, however, some problems with the console. For example, the damn thing needed two more batteries than the Game Boy in order to work, and the real kick in the dick is that they seem to last only half as long. Not to mention that thanks to Sega rushing to get this device out into the world, there are certain other interior problems. Whereas the Game Boy could go actual decades without breaking in any way, the Game Gear would kill itself. Usually because the capacitors inside would frazzle and melt or some shit. This console I have here is a refurbished one. Works great and all, but for some reason the guy decided to change the light bulb that indicates battery life. The one he replaced it with is so bright that I have to have a tiny piece of blue tack over it to dim down the brightness. Oh, you don't believe me? Well, here, look at this. Jesus! I think I'm blind. Anyway, did you know there were some other cool add-ons for the Game Gear? Like the TV Tuner, letting you watch your favourite television programmes on the go. Ah. Doesn't seem to be working. What I need now is someone to take this out into the world and see if they can get a signal. What the hell? Uh, hello mate. Id, do you think you can take this out and see if you can get a signal on it? Sweet! Don't worry, I'll find the TV channel for my names. Cheers! Dickhead. Anyway, while he's out there trying to do that, I'm going to get the games together so we can do a proper review of what this little handheld had to offer. It's time to find a TV signal, to find a channel, all on my own, I'll show them. Right, come on, come on, come on. That goddamn batteries are dead! 
Failure. Here's all the games that I have in my collection. Now you may be wondering, how am I going to play these things now that Comic Rob's run off with the Game Gear? Well, there are other means to play in these games. Thanks to the Mega SG and the correct adapter that I am very fortunate to own, we are able to play these games on the big screen. First up is Sonic the Hedgehog. As you can see at a glance, it is incredibly faithful to the Master System port, which ain't surprising because the game was released only 10 days after that one. Although the screen is cropped so small that it's tough to react in time for when a badnik appears to shit on your day. And that's a common problem for the Game Gear games. They all feel far too tightly cropped. But that aside, it's a damn fun game. And it does have some things different from the Master System one. Sonic's sprite is slightly different, and the special stages are a different layout. The shield is... smaller for some reason. And if you know the SMS port well enough, then you should have no trouble beating this game. Next is Road Rash. Just like Sonic, it is very faithful to the Master System port. And can we just, for a second, compare this to the Game Boy version? Yeah. Yeah, do I, do I need to say any more? Also, while the game here is of course cropped down a bit, unlike Sonic, it doesn't seem to shit on the gameplay in any way. A must-have for the console, if you ask me. Dragon Crystal. Any long-term viewer of this channel knows I love this game for the SMS, and here it is truly awesome. The big difference between that one and this one, aside from the cropping of course, is that the music is an entirely different composition. Both sound great, and I think I prefer the Master System one just a little bit more, if I'm honest. The items have different sprites as well, for some reason. Oh, and the intro is slightly different. It may even be better than the SMS port. But just like the SMS port, the randomizer here can either help you or bend you over. Columns! Ah, Columns. Sega's answer to Tetris. A powerful titan to topple. That being said, apparently when Nakayama, the head of Sega of Japan in the 90s, was trying to recruit Tom Kalinske to take over Sega of America at the time, he gave a Game Gear to Tom with Columns as an included game. I'm not saying that's the reason he took the job, but it did apparently make Mr. Kalinske realise that Sega did indeed have a good chance to kill the bastards at Nintendo. While that's all fun food for thought, what is the game actually like? Well, this could well be the best port of columns I have ever played. Oh sure, the graphics ain't anything like the Mega Drive one, but who gives two shits? This thing plays so well, it is a must-have for the system. On a side note, I wonder how Rob's getting on trying to get a TV signal on my Game Gear. Crystal Warriors. Finally, a game that didn't come out in the SMS. Strategy game with a cool story and some awesome sprite work. It's a great game that only takes a little practice to get used to. The graphics are sweet and the music is fitting. Not a game you can pick up and play if you've only got five minutes to spare, but a gem worth having in the Game Gear collection. When it comes to RPGs, the Master System didn't get a hell of a lot. It got a good few, but it didn't get a hell of a lot. So if you still feel like you need more of that kind of stuff, here. Turn-based. RPG. Looks great. Need I say more? No? Good. Next game. Robocop vs. The Terminator. Look, when it comes to this game, everything's been said before, so just go check out that vid in the description below. Popills. Popills? Pop, 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 this. Okay, okay, this, this is a weird one. It's a Japanese car, and... Um, what, what the fuck am I doing here? Save the princess bullshit. Why the hell do I start on round 17? Well, you, you know what, bugger this, I suck. Next game. 
Woody Pop. It's a breakout clone. Where you're a log. Who comes up with this shit? It's an intense game that if you want to go all Sega vs Nintendo, then yes, this is way better than Alleyway on the Game Boy. Better control and much more addictive gameplay. Not to mention that there are power-ups in this which dial up the crazy pretty quick. Pengo! This one was recommended to me by Abbas Lisil. Yes, I'm sure I've gone and said that wrong. I'm very sorry. First time playing this, I didn't have a fucking idea what to do. But it's quite simple to wrap your head around. Just use the blocks that surround you to kill things. It's surprisingly fun and addictive. Okay, the graphics are crap, even for the Game Gear, but who here really cares about that? Meanwhile... This way! NHL Hockey. The cartridge refuses to work, so I think I've dodged a bullet. Psychic World! Just like the Master System port, of course. Cool story with decent artwork and colourful as all hell. And all accompanied by some decent tunes. As a game, it does get stupid difficult at times, but it's very addictive, and you could sink quite a few hours into this one. That is, of course, if it wasn't for the fact that the handheld's batteries would probably die before you got to the end of the game. Next is Fantasy Zone. A classic on the Master System, and it is here as well. Different from its SMS brother, this game has different enemies, level layouts, and even music. All very cool, but the gun sound effect here hurts my ears. Listen. <laughs> Yeah, plus it feels claustrophobic at times with that cropped screen. KO! A sports game. Looks great, plays like ass. Halley Wars! Such a great game. Awesome gameplay. Awesome music. Awesome... everything! And I found it at a damn car boot sale. With Rob. Next is The Lion King. Great music above all. I wish I knew if the Game Gear one was based off of the SMS port, or if it was the other way around, or if they just came out at the same time, kind of like the Sonic games. I'm just curious, you know. It's one of those where the fuck do I go kind of games. There's no clear indication as to where to go. But at least you ain't timed, so it doesn't really matter. You will find where to go, it's just a bit bloody annoying on some levels. Oh, and full damage doesn't seem to occur. It's fun, but it's not as memorable as the Mega Drive one. And the final game of this evening is Sonic Triple Trouble. While the presentation is nice and the addition of a spin dash is very welcome, the rest of the game is a pain in the ass. It doesn't play nearly as well as the other Sonic game I mentioned at the start of all this. It chugs along and just feels shitty. Not worth buying unless you're a die-hard fan for Sonic collecting. Like me, I guess. And with that, that is the last of the games that I have on the system. To be honest, it is a fantastic handheld and well worth owning. The problem is, because of those capacitors, it does break. You've got to be careful what you're buying, which is why I went for a refurbished one. It seemed like the smart way to spend my money. Speaking of which, where the hell is Comic Rob with my Game Gear? The Gopher Tortoise is actually a massive fan of anal sex. It does not care about reproducing so much as humping the bum of its partner. <laughs> Today's episode was sponsored by Twerking.